Team Joshua admits that it is difficult trying to find sparring partners to emulate what Andy Ruiz does well. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing if you want to become part of the gang gang. Notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We work. ESPN Plus UFC 242. I am an affiliate. Link in the description helps the channel. And it should be a good fight. Sky Sports link in the description. Joshua's team has already identified ideal sparring partners ahead of the Ruiz rematch. Right? And this was an interesting read. Anthony Joshua's team already have sparring partners in place for the Andy Ruiz Jr. rematch after finding it hard to replicate the Mexican ahead of the first fight. Britain's heavyweight star has started to prepare for his second world title fight against Ruiz, Saudi Arabia, December 7th. Joshua attempts to avenge his shock New York defeat in June. Ruiz stepped in as a late replacement after Gerald Miller failed the drug test and promoter Eddie Hearns admits the change of opponent was not ideal for Joshua's training camp. But the matchroom boxing boss reveals how early attempts have now been, been made to arrange suitable sparring partners. Quote, it's so difficult to replicate the style of Andy Ruiz, Hearn told Sky Sports. The guy is 6'1", he's 19 stone, and he's got speed like a middleweight. It's one thing getting sparring partners in, it's getting them to let their hands go against Anthony Joshua. Would you want to do it? You've got to be mad to even spar with him, let alone fight him. That that's overkill because I know people that aren't that that aren't that big, you know, compared to Joshua's six six frame that have sparred him. Anywho, we've got more heavyweights than anyone. I don't really want them helping out Andy Ruiz. We've already identified probably half a dozen guys who we think would be the right mold. One of the problems last time was we had six weeks to prepare. Ruiz was coming off. Alexander Dimitrenko, which was actually a great style to prepare for Anthony Joshua. We tried to get sparring in. We struggled a little bit. No excuses, but this time around, the preparation has got to be spot on. There's six, seven guys we've already identified, and hopefully they make the trip and we can get the absolute best preparation this time around. Joshua Ruiz will be reunited at the press conference, which already happened. And... Joshua said, I lost in the world championship finals. Imagine I stopped then. There would be no now. Stopping isn't in my DNA. As long as I have breath, I will keep fighting for the passion of boxing and more so an ambassador for championship level fighting is where I belong. I was born with a fighting spirit. I know how to fight. People say you lost your titles. I say to lose something is to never get it back. I have a second chance December 7th. I didn't have a warm up fight. I'm not gun shy. Listen, my thoughts, Andy Ruiz carries a lot of momentum into this fight. They are telling on themselves, Team Joshua, they've backtracked, dub, double talk, said this and that. Now they're saying and admitting Andy Ruiz has a stylistic, um, problematic style that's hard to emulate in sparring. That's I don't see why they would reveal this. Why, why do they talk and reveal these types of details? So if anything, if I'm Andy Ruiz and he watches this video or if he reads this article, I'm I'm feeling myself. I'm like, OK, see, they're admitting they're giving my props. Now, I got to admit, this is the type of stuff that makes Team Joshua look bad. So your team has used every excuse. First of all, let's back up that train. Immediately upon losing to Ruiz, there were a ton of excuses as to Actually, there were no excuses. Let me take that back. When he first lost, there were no excuses. Andy, Andy was the Ruiz. He was he was the better man, and he beat me fair and square. And then now you do these interviews, and I'm not gonna play it, but he's looking and watching the fight and explaining why he lost, and you know these different types of things. See, this was him before the fight, the week of the fight. He says, "I no fear in my heart." for any man training complete june 1st meet with me and he's flexing and you know looking like the shogun of harlem everything's good 
then he loses to Andy Ruiz, which is supposed to be a shock to people. And he's like, this is Andy's night. Congrats, champ. And then after, this is like days after, he's posting pictures of the team in the New York Knicks locker room and he's flexing. Don't let a success get to your head or failure get to your heart. And then he was, you know, doing Instagram live in the village in New York, playing basketball, shooting bricks. And then he said he's riding the way. You know, it's just like he was trying so hard to let people know that he was I, you know, women kind of do that after breakups and stuff. You know, they're, they're depressed and going through it from a tough breakup. And then they, on their social media, it looks like they're out with drinks with the girls and shit. And hey, look at me. I'm, I'm happily single. Yay. You know, but they're crying themselves to sleep. Anyway, so he did that. Then more recently, he says, Andy Ruiz, he, he hit me with the lucky punch sent from the gods. You know, the gods must be crazy. They gave him the power. That's what he said. Now your promoter is doing this interview saying, man, it's hard to find sparring partners to to replicate what Ruiz does well, man. Andy Ruiz, if he if he as long as he didn't if, as long as he don't fuck up and like, you know, get ahead, like some people suggest that he's living the life and all that. Man, if you don't if if that don't happen, I I, I give him a hell of a shot here. This it just seems like it's coming down for Joshua. And then you got to listen to what I've said, new media and also Andy Ruiz. Joshua Ruiz said he don't seem right in the head. And he said, I think Eddie Hearn is kind of pushing him to this, which is what I said from the beginning. New media. I do think Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn has a lot of people he owes favors to. You know, he's working with DeZone, in my opinion, he's working with DeZone. And this was his biggest star. He doesn't have Canelo. That's a Golden Boy fighter. He didn't bring Canelo. De La Hoya and Golden Boy did. So his biggest star just took a, a, a vicious L. And we know in boxing, when you take a spill like that, four knockdowns, you know, people believe you quit. I believe it was a quit. Wilder and some other people. Then your ship starts to sink a bit, you know. And now Eddie Hearn knows that. Plus the opposing side, if they didn't do, they didn't trigger the immediate rematch, then Al Heyman and PBC have all the belts. And I seen Eddie Hearn get on an interview and say like, oh yeah, people are saying Al Heyman has all the belts. No, Andy Ruiz has the belts. Same difference. That's what, that's what we say in the Bay. Same difference. It's the same thing. Al Heyman advises and represents Andy Ruiz on PBC. The only reason he's fighting on the zone is because it was in the contract that there were rematch options, period. So if you didn't trigger a rematch, then PBC will have all the belts, Wilder's belt, and all the belts that Andy Ruiz took from Joshua. So yeah, PBC and Al Heyman have the belts too. This is just like, you know, that's like saying, oh, this is McDonald's. You know, this is not Ronald McDonald's. This is just McDonald's. I mean, come on, really? We playing semantics like that? So we all know what that means when people say Al Heyman has all the belts. He has the power. He has he has his his opinion in the ears of the fighters who would have all the belts. That's a bad look. And, you know, I just feel what Andy Ruiz said. I, I said it before. Joshua, he's in a do or die situation. And I think this is Eddie Hearn's insistence to try to gain that power back. Like, man, prove this is a fluke. Please prove it to it. This is a fluke. That's why when Joshua early, see, Joshua, I don't think he's his own boss yet like that. He has to, he's kind of like being coached. Like Floyd Mayweather, I genuinely feel Floyd worked his way up to the point where he says what he wants. He don't have to check in with Al Heyman. But you notice when Joshua speaks out on his own, like as his own man, then it always has to come back and be backtracked. Like, oh, he, he did the interview. It was just him and IFL. He was like, yeah, they're saying that's 100 mil for the fight with Wilder. Give me 50 mil. Listen, 50 mil, I'll take the fight tomorrow. And then Wilder said, oh, my God, I got your 50 mil, Anthony Joshua. And then he's like, no, I'm not going to sell myself. Devil in the deed because you got with your team. And they're like, nah, don't take that, blah, blah, blah. And then now all of a sudden there's something different. Same thing with Joshua. Initially, he said he did it's a vlog on his own YouTube. He was by the window talking. He's like, my loss to Andy Ruiz. Why I lost, you know, from my perspective. And he has like this lifetime movies, music going. And 
He's explaining his loss days later. We're like, who does that? Who lose? Name a fighter, win, lose, or draw. Like Pacquiao. When Pacquiao lost to Floyd, that was six years in the making. You never seen Pacquiao, you know, go on Instagram live, and, and you know, two, three days later, or on on a vlog, and say, um, yes, I, I believe my um, my fight with Floyd. I lo I lost that uh, in the last uh, forty five seconds. You know, come on, bro. Like, who does that? Who even explains some shit like that days later? It'd be one thing if you went on, like, Sky Sports or, you know, Showtime or whoever, HBO. I mean, you're just doing a vlog on your channel to explain why you lost. Really weird. But, you know, I think Andy Ruiz definitely carries an advantage here because he knows. He knows what he did, and he sees the team. If I could see it, and I'm not even the fighter, then Andy Ruiz can see it, and his team can see it. That's how I look at it. I'm not like reinventing the wheel. I'm not. I'm just picking up and, you know, I might put things in a perspective that people might have forgot about. Oh, I forgot he said that. I forgot her and said that, you know, and I put it all together. But it's all out there for everyone. I'm not out here making up stuff about what Team Joshua said and whatnot. So they're admitting that they've had issues with finding sparring partners. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. They said the first training camp went perfect. Like, I, this is why no one can believe what is being said. They they had a rumor that was circulating that Joey DeVecco of Philly gave Joshua all the problems in the world. Either he gave him a concussion, he knocked him down, he knocked him out, the father was mad. These are the rumors, right? They were saying these are the rumors, right, about what happened. And then Joshua was like, oh, yeah, just some physio stuff, you know. And then he later said it was a line in the camp why he got the marks on his face. They denounced the Joey DeVecco. Joey DeVecco doesn't sound like he's going to be in his new camp. How come? I thought Joey DeVecco, everything was cool. You just had simple sparring and you know what happened. Why is Joey DeVecco, you know, why not put him in the, he has about Andy Ruiz's build and size. Why not put him back in, in the camp? You feel what I'm saying? So it's just this stuff that they're saying is shaky. So anyway, immediately after losing these these um rumors came about that joshua was hurt and sparring to some capacity by joey devecco or you know Ab agit cabiel that's who who originally started off but then it got word came out that it was um that it was joey devecco right they said, no, absolutely not. That didn't happen. Such lies. Why do people want five minutes of fame? Yada, yada, yada. Training camp was perfect. Now, they're saying it's so difficult to replicate the style of Andy Ruiz. Right? This is Team Joshua. We got more heavyweights than anyone. I don't really want them helping out Andy Ruiz. We've already identified half dozen guys that could fit the mold. Um, you've got to be m mad to even spar with Joshua, which is not, you know, I know people who spar with him, put it that way. Um, he said people aren't letting their hands go and they're basically making it sound like there were some issues in camp. He says, one of the problems is last time we had six weeks to prepare. Ruiz was coming off Dimitrinko, which is actually a great style to prepare for Joshua. They told us when the Joey DeVecco rumors came out, that everything was great and they had a perfect camp you know just a, a a miscalculation now once again team joshua we tried to get the sparring in and we struggled a bit no excuses but this time around the preparation has got to be spot on six or seven guys blah blah, blah. look they said no excuses we struggled i thought you had a great training camp when the joey deveco rumors were out that's what they said they said no Joshua didn't struggle in training. He didn't take what's the name lightly. This whole thing is unraveling. I'll be glad when this fight's over, to be honest. Really will. Can't wait for the outcome. It's just, this is, they just keep throwing different things out there. Don't matter if it makes sense or whatever. We're just supposed to just believe it all, I guess. You know? And last thing I'll say is, this, look, and he's mugging him like this. This is just weird. But little, the last thing I'll say is this. They're saying they struggle getting sparring in last minute, blah, blah, blah. And Luis Ortiz, King Kong Ortiz was allegedly someone, a person of interest that they really wanted for Joshua. 
with these statements, like I said before, because immediately when Luis Ortiz's team turned down six, seven million allegedly, and Eddie Hearn couldn't wait. See, I don't forget this stuff. Eddie Hearn couldn't wait to get to the media and say, ah, oh, aha, see, you know, Luis Ortiz has been ducking us the whole time. He don't want no smoke. We offered him more money than ever, six, seven million dollars, and he turned it down. This is just ridiculous. He's a ducker. But now, after he loses, one of the problems is last time was we had six weeks to prepare. Ruiz was coming off Dimitrinko, which was a great style for him to prepare for Joshua. We tried to get sparring in, but we struggled a little bit. No excuses. So you made the excuse and then said no excuses. Got you. Anyway, back to Luis Ortiz. Does anybody believe that if you struggle to get sparring in with that minimal amount of time, six weeks, you struggle to get sparring for Andy Ruiz Jr., right, who wasn't his own team admits they were, he wasn't in the best shape. He was coming off a fight, but he, you know he he wanted to come down a little bit and wait. He just did what he could do and still got the victory. Does anyone now believe what they were saying? Old media was saying previously is that Luis Ortiz duck. So you want to switch to a southpaw before you were training for Gerald Miller, and then you <laughs> you had a switch. You had a switch. Look, Ruiz stepped in as a late replacement after Miller failed a drug test. Eddie Hearn admits the change of opponent was not ideal for Joshua's training camp. But the matchroom boss revealed how early attempts have now been made. Look, Eddie Hearn admits the change of opponent was not ideal for Joshua's training camp. So, going from Gerald Miller, Big Baby Miller, an orthodox fighter who's 317, to a southpaw Cuban with 317 and 19 losses as an amateur... You mean to tell me that's what they really and truly wanted? See, that's why I don't trip. You guys can say whatever you want, but it'll all be and it'll all be revealed in time. So I just had to remind y'all because I'm like the Roy Jones of this shit. Y'all must have forgot. Luis Ortiz, you guys were saying Luis Ortiz ducked Joshua. Bro, it's very evident they didn't want to fight Luis Ortiz. First of all, like I said from the beginning, new media, they really want to fight Luis Ortiz they should have chosen him before Gerald Miller, right? They should have chosen him when he was the mandatory years ago. They should have chosen him when he was signed to match room for a few fights, a, a fight by fight basis. And they were having him fight Dave Allen and Malik Scott instead, but they didn't. Now they're saying only having six weeks for Ruiz, you know, that was very challenging to get sparring for, you know, and to switch gears in that way. Does anyone believe that he really wanted to fight Luis Ortiz now? A southpaw with a totally different style than what you were training for? And saying it's so difficult to replicate the style. So, yeah, man. Andy Ruiz, you know, back to him. He has a lot of momentum here. Their team is just all over the place. I think they don't understand what happened, why they lost. So they're just throwing stuff out. And it's it's really the UK media has been very disappointing to be to be honest, very disappointing because this is your people and you have probably the best access to them. You can get up and pick up a phone, have the phone numbers and same area codes or the proximity to drive to the gyms and access to, to do this. And none of these tough questions have I seen um, get brought up at all from, you know, from anybody from the UK media. None. And this is what they're saying. So how can you guys allow just everyone, the public, fans, a team to keep switching what they're saying and we're just supposed to forget? Like, it's documented stuff. This is documented stuff. Joshua said, oh, Andy Ruiz hit me with a lucky punch, a punch sent from the gods. Today, he just said it wasn't a lucky punch. Literally. He said it wasn't a lucky punch. You know, but he caught me right on the temple. And then he said Ruiz is the best heavyweight out. And he has a skill set. But then on that same, that untold clip, he said, oh, he's not that skillful. When when the lady asked him, or you surprised with how skilled he was? Bro, their team, it is over. Their team is all over the place. You did Joshua the untold story and said, 
he ain't that skillful. But the lie detector test determined that was a lie because your promoter is basically inadvertently throwing you under the bus by telling the world, hey, guess what? It's hard to find sparring for a guy like Andy Ruiz. So how is it hard to find sparring for someone that's not even that talented? That's not that skillful. This is what you said. I never said that about Andy Ruiz. This is what Joshua said. So why is your team saying, you know, we got to make these changes. We got to possibly add a coach. You know, we got to come with a different approach. I made mistakes. Things went wrong, you know, for a guy who's allegedly, you know, not skillful and reliant on lucky punches. But you need special. You didn't have a good camp because you couldn't find guys to mimic Andy Ruiz, it, bro, it's just, this is bad. This is bad, bad, bad. You know, it seems like you're doing an awfully lot of soul searching for somebody who allegedly is not that skillful. How do you have a tough time sparring, finding sparring for someone who's not that like, so it's just, it makes sense to keep it real from the beginning. You know, you can't sleep on Pacquiao and make it like he's easy to train for because he's not, he's unique in what he does. So you can not like Pacquiao and, and kind of diss him in a different way, but you can't say, oh, it's, man, it's easy finding sparring partners to mimic Pacquiao because you know it's not. So it's like, what's the point of saying that? You know, and it just makes it like, why why should or can anyone believe what he's saying when it's just constantly changed time and time again? You said when the Joey DeVecco rumors were out, you had a perfect training camp. Now, all of a sudden, you're saying, oh, things didn't go well and things went you know, haywire before and I didn't make no excuses. But this you telling the public is basically making the excuse because you keep telling the offering up these man. I'm picking Ruiz. Let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. We working. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing. Peace.